Okay, so for this video, we're gonna be talking about monitors. But before I start highlighting my top picks, we're gonna do a deep dive into the key features you need to know about monitors before you make a choice on what to buy. If you're just interested in the monitors though, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps. So the important features you need to think about before you purchase a monitor are the panel type, refresh rate, response time, resolution, adaptive sync, and any extra features like HDR support, ergonomic features like an adjustable stand, or mounting capabilities. So what does panel type refer to? Well, the panel type of a monitor simply refers to the technology being implemented to produce the images on your screen. So what options are there? Well, there's IPS, OLED, VA, and TN to name a few. IPS, aka in-plane switching, is a screen panel that utilizes liquid crystal displays, aka LCDs. And how it works is the IPS panel has a layer of liquid crystals that is sandwiched between two glass surfaces. Those liquid crystal molecules are then aligned parallel to those two glass surfaces in predetermined directions, hence the in-plane name. And then the molecules have an electric field applied to them that reorientates them, while still remaining parallel to the glass surfaces to produce images. So now that you know how it works, what are the strengths of the IPS panel type? Well, they have wide viewing angles, meaning that colors and brightness remain consistent even when you're viewing it from different angles. A situation this might be beneficial in is if you're using the monitor to watch a movie or video with friends and you don't want any weird distortion to occur for anyone depending on where they are in the room. IPS monitors also have great color accuracy and improved contrast so they can display darker blacks and brighter whites so images appear more vibrant. This is great for gamers that want an immersive high quality experience, but it's also great for creatives who do things like graphic design, photography, video editing, you name it. Additionally, they also have lower input lag than some other monitor types like VA, which is obviously an advantage if you're playing games that require fast response times and smooth motion. Now I know I just said that's an advantage in the case of IPS versus VA monitors, but its response time is technically a disadvantage when you compare it to a TN monitor that has faster response times. Response times are of course something you should consider when you're buying a monitor, but since IPS monitors have better color accuracy, wider viewing angles, and improved contrast, they more than make up for that difference. Now, all those features are great, but it could be considered a disadvantage if you're worried about price, since IPS panels tend to be more expensive than TN panel monitors. That price difference isn't that big of an issue though, since there's lots of IPS monitors on the market now that are pretty affordable. The last disadvantage is that IPS monitors are known for having a risk of backlight bleed, which makes the display appear unevenly lit. An example of when you would notice this is when you're viewing darker scenes with lots of blacks. When you take the advantages and you weigh them against the disadvantages though, IPS monitors are a great choice. In fact, many of the monitors we're going to cover in this video are IPS panel monitors. Another panel type is OLED. That stands for Organic Light Emitting Diode. It's a variant type of an LED, which has a layer of an organic compound that emits light in response to an electric current. Oh, and the reason I'm saying organic instead of specifying the compound is because there are different OLED variants, with some being based on polymers and others being based on small molecules. So what does this technology allow for? Well, for one, OLED displays work without a backlight, which is different from other display types because it's emitting its own visible light. And because of that, it's able to display a much deeper black level. Not only that, but each pixel can be controlled individually. So the display is able to completely turn a pixel off which allows for unmatched contrast and HDR performance. And HDR stands for High Dynamic Range, which is a color technology that allows for more color shades and contrast nuances than older tech. Now, similar to IPS panels, OLEDs also offer wide viewing angles with minimal distortion. And OLED displays have fast response times that help eliminate any unwanted motion blur and ghosting while playing video games. OLED displays also have potentially lower power consumption, especially when you compare to some something like an LCD panel while displaying dark content because of being able to turn individual pixels off. Now for the cons. If you've done any research into OLED screens, you'll instantly know this issue. And that's the simple fact that OLED screens cost more. In fact, they're one of the most expensive options on the market. Not only that, but since OLED monitors are relatively new to the market, there isn't that wide of a selection because they simply have fewer models available to purchase. These are just consumer issues though. As for an actual issue OLED panels are susceptible to, 
there's the burn-in issue. And a burn-in issue is when a static image that you commonly display in the same spot on the screen will potentially permanently leave a faint imprint in that area. The most common example of something that might get burnt in is a desktop icon on your taskbar. Overall though, OLED displays are the best choice for picture quality and performance. So if you're a gamer, content creator, or content consumer that doesn't care about the burn-in risk or the cost, this might be the best choice. Now what about TN and VA monitors? Well, VA stands for vertical alignment, and the strength of this panel type is they have high contrast ratios with deep blacks, as well as a decent balance between response time and color accuracy. But VA panels have a very narrow viewing angle, so you can expect a lot of distortion when you're outside of its intended viewing angle. And these panels are also known for potential ghosting, which is when you see a faint after image trail behind moving objects on your screen. I know I just went over the cons for this panel type, but it's actually a pretty solid option, and depending on what else the monitor is offering might be a better choice than IPS. Now the next panel type we're gonna talk about is TN, which stands for Twisted Pneumatic. And the strength of TN panels is that they include super fast response times, and generally they're really affordable, but they suffer from poor viewing angles, and in this case, horrible color accuracy. You might be able to increase the color accuracy by tweaking settings, but at the end of the day, it can only do so much to improve the experience. So if you you happen to be a creative professional, I strongly recommend you don't get a TN panel. It might be a good choice for gaming though if you're really into a game like Counter-Strike where the extra responsiveness might help you out. I imagine most people aren't going to be a big fan of TN monitors, but there is an audience for them. But one thing to remember is even though these are strengths and weaknesses for each of these panels, it also depends on what model monitor you get and from which manufacturer. So which panel type is best? Well, technically it's OLED, but the real answer is it depends, especially for different price ranges. Moving on to other features you need to think about, we have refresh rate. What's refresh rate? Well, it simply means how how many times per second the display is able to create a new image, hence the refresh part of the name. So as an example, if your monitor has a refresh rate of 60 hertz, that means the image refreshed 60 times per second. And if it was 120 hertz, that would be 120 refreshes per second. And in this case, a higher refresh rate is better. 60 hertz used to be very common back in the day, but once you use a monitor that's something like 120 hertz, 144 hertz, 180 hertz, etc., you're never going to want to go back. It's that big of a difference in how smooth the monitor feels. And that's not just for gaming or watching videos videos, even navigating your desktop and programs just feels better. Just like anything though, refresh rates do have diminishing returns. Of course, a 240Hz monitor will probably feel better than a 180Hz monitor, but the difference won't feel as intense as going from 60Hz to 120Hz. And before you buy the highest refresh rate monitor you can find, there's one other thing you need to think about. And that's whether or not your PC is capable of running games at high enough frames per second to support the refresh rate. For example, if you buy a 1440p monitor with a refresh rate of 240Hz, can your PC actually get 240 FPS in the game you're playing to support that refresh rate? If you can't, the extra refresh rate ends up being pointless, and in some cases can cause screen tearing, stuttering, and jittering because of the fluctuating FPS. That's why manufacturers came up with Adaptive Sync to solve that issue, which allows for dynamic adjusting of a monitor's vertical refresh rate to match the frame rate being generated by your graphics card. Adaptive Sync has all sorts of branding names, like NVIDIA G-Sync, or AMD FreeSync, which are a form of VESA Adaptive Sync being implemented in different ways to work with your hardware. If you have a NVIDIA GPU, you would want a monitor that supports G-Sync. And if you have an AMD GPU, you would want a monitor that supports FreeSync. A lot of monitors on the market nowadays will support both, but in some cases a monitor might not, so keep that in mind. So that covers a lot of the basic features you should be thinking about before you buy a monitor in 2024. Meaning we can finally get to the monitors I recommend you consider buying in 2024. Disclaimer, all the products I'm about to mention are linked in the description below. These are affiliate links, so I earn a small commission if you buy through them at no additional cost to you, which helps support me so I can keep making content for you guys. Oh, and real quick, before I get into the monitors, consider 
checking out my blog website, thecodecomet.com. It's a place where I write about tech-related topics, so you can see some of the other topics I'll probably be making a video on in the future. With that out of the way, let's actually talk about the monitors I recommend. The first monitor I want to talk about is the AOC Q27G 3XMN 27-inch mini LED gaming monitor. One day monitor manufacturers will name these products something simple, but not today. Luckily, the complex name doesn't stop this monitor from being a great option. It's a 27-inch mini LED gaming monitor. So what does that mean? Well, in the case of this monitor, it's utilizing a VA panel with mini LED backlight technology. And mini LED is simply an evolution of LCD. That's using small blue LEDs as a backlight. This backlighting technology is supposed to have improved brightness and contrast ratios. So in theory, the monitor is supposed to be better at producing high quality true blacks and brighter whites. Now the resolution for this monitor is 2K QHD, which stands for Quad High Definition. That's a 2560 by 1440 pixel density. And for 1440p is slowly becoming the new standard resolution to replace 1920 by 1080 as the next big 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Of course, a higher resolution means it's going to require better hardware to run effectively, especially if you're interested in gaming. So before you buy any of these monitors, make sure you have a powerful enough system to support them. I'll be making a video about GPUs in the future that should serve as a guide that will touch on what GPUs are appropriate for 1440p gaming. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe to this channel to get updated for when that video comes out. But back to the monitor, this AOC monitor has a refresh rate of 180 Hertz via DisplayPort 1.4 which is great. And speaking of ports, you'll find that this monitor has two HDMI 2.0 ports and one DisplayPort 1.4 as well as one audio out port. I know the title for this product on Amazon says it has two display ports in the title, but that's just a typo on someone's end. In fact, if you go to the description about the monitor, you'll see that it only has one display port 1.4, which is the actual correct number. As for other features, this monitor has standard adaptive sync technology to prevent screen tearing and comes with an ergonomic stand that's height adjustable and has the ability to swivel and pivot to your liking. If you don't like the stand though, the monitor is of course VESA compatible, so you should be able to mount it to a desk mount of your choice easily. So far, everything I've said about this monitor makes it seem pretty good, but kind of standard. So what makes me recommend this monitor over others? Well, it's the fact that this monitor supports VESA Display HDR 1000. That's true HDR. A lot of other monitors on the market claim to have HDR support, but the reality is they simply don't. You'll commonly see this when a monitor says it supports HDR 400. Technically, they aren't lying since the monitor can read an HDR signal, but you're not going to get the quality that HDR 1000 allows for. The fact that this monitor has true HDR support and all those other high quality features makes it a great monitor. But the craziest thing about this monitor is the price, which at the time of this video is $280 USD. In this price range, that makes this monitor an absolute steal, and I highly recommend you purchase it if you're looking for a new monitor under $300 USD that has HDR support. Now the next monitor I want to recommend is for people that don't care about HDR, and that's the MSI G274 QPF-QD 27 inch gaming monitor. This monitor, just like the last one, has a QHD 1440p resolution, but unlike the AOC which used a VA panel, this MSI monitor is utilizing an IPS panel, which we covered extensively earlier. It also has a similar refresh rate at 170Hz, which is 10Hz lower than the AOC, but it's still a really solid refresh rate. And you're not going to have to worry about any screen tearing on this monitor, since it supports both NVIDIA G-Sync and AMD FreeSync Premium. It also has HDR400, but as I explained earlier, this isn't going to provide you with the HDR experience the last monitor is capable of giving you. As for the design, the stand has a wide range of ergonomic adjustment capabilities for height, pivot, and tilt support. So you'll most likely be able to maneuver it in a way that works for your desk setup. And the monitor comes equipped with one Type-C port, one DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0B ports, a headphone out port, and a DC jack. The Type-C port is there to let you power devices up to 15 watts. It also has a 5-way joystick navigator located on the back if you wish to change the monitor's default settings. Overall, the MSI G274QPF-QD 
is a really solid monitor and is actually really affordable for all these features at a price of around $200 USD on Amazon at the time of this video. That's because of a sale right now. Normally it's listed price is $300 USD. At the discounted price though, this is a great bang for your buck monitor and is a great choice as a budget 1440p monitor for gaming. Now, maybe you're a hardcore gamer that really cares about high refresh rates. Well, if that's the case, I'm gonna recommend you get the MSI G274QPX 27 inch gaming monitor instead. This monitor is very similar to the other MSI monitor we just covered, but takes all those features and simply bumps the refresh rate all the way up to 240 hertz. That might matter if your primary game is a shooter like Counter-Strike where higher refresh rates give you an advantage. And that extra refresh rate is only gonna bump the price to $350 USD on Amazon right now. So if that sale I mentioned for the other monitor isn't running anymore when you watch this video, I would just spend the extra $50 to get this monitor instead. Now, maybe you're looking for something premium and have money to spend for top of the line equipment. If that's the case, the AOC Aegon Pro AG276 QZD 27 inch OLED tournament gaming monitor might be what you're looking for. When I said premium, I meant it, since this monitor features a cutting edge OLED panel for extremely high color accuracy and perfect blacks. Not only that, but the monitor has HDR10, so the color quality is going to be even higher, and you'll be able to experience those high quality colors at a 1440p QHD wide resolution, which they have at a refresh rate of 240 hertz. So regardless of its gaming, content creation, or content consumption, you know this monitor is going to be able to deliver it in incredibly high quality. And you're not going to have to worry about any screen tearing since this monitor has both AMD FreeSync Premium and G-Sync support. As for other features, this monitor comes equipped with two DisplayPort 1.4 ports, two HDMI 2.0 ports, two USB-C 3.2 ports, one USB-B port, two 5 watt built in speakers, and an audio out 3.5 millimeter. So you're going to be able to easily hook this monitor up to all sorts of devices. In fact, AOC makes this a selling point on the Amazon page by highlighting the fact you can hook this monitor up to your PS5, Xbox, and Switch consoles. Now if you do end up hooking a console up to this monitor, you need to know that the refresh rate in that instance is capped at 120 hertz, and the performance is going to depend on the system. The monitor also features special lighting on the back that comes in various colors, which you're able to customize. So you'll be able to get your desk set up looking just the way you want it. Speaking of looks, the monitor has a fully ergonomic stand, so you'll be able to adjust the height with ease and switch between landscape or portrait orientation if you want. All right, so how much is this monitor going to cost you? Well, the Aegon Pro AG276 QZD Tournament Gaming Monitor is going to set you back $700 USD on Amazon at the time of this video. That's pretty expensive, but again, this is a premium monitor, so if you're looking for top of the line quality and have the money to spend, this is one you should definitely consider. But what should you buy if money is tight and your computer isn't even capable of handling 1440p? Well, if you're on a budget and don't care about 1440p, I recommend getting a monitor like the Kurai 24 inch monitor. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly, but if I didn't, please let me know in the comments below. This monitor utilizes the old standard 1080p resolution which might not be incredible in 2024, but is still very much passable for visual quality. As for the panel, it's using a VA panel that has a maximum refresh rate of 165 hertz. And the monitor should be able to avoid ghosting with its adaptive sync technology. Now for the ports, the monitor comes with two HDMI 1.4 ports, one DisplayPort 1.2, and an audio out. Note, if you plan on using the HDMI ports, they only achieve 144 hertz refresh rate. The monitor is also capable of being tilted from minus five degrees to 15 degrees. So it should be able to cover most viewing angles, but if you can't, the monitor is wall mountable with VESA 75 by 75 millimeter standard mounts. There's nothing crazy about this monitor, but that's expected since this Kurai gaming monitor only costs $160 on Amazon, but can be found on sale at the time of this video for around $106 USD. That's a pretty great price if you're on a budget, or if you're just looking for a cheap secondary monitor to have on the side. Now, before I end this video, I do have one honorable mention I want to include, and that's the Acer Nitro XV271U 27-inch 
WQHD gaming monitor. This monitor is an alternative to the cheaper MSI monitor we mentioned earlier in the video, but this monitor lacks G-Sync compatibility. It does support AMD FreeSync Premium technology though, so if you're an AMD user, it might be a good choice for you. As for the features, this monitor utilizes an IPS panel that supports a resolution up to QHD wide 1440p, while also having a maximum refresh rate of 180Hz. So you're going to be getting a pretty high quality viewing experience. As for its ports, it has one DisplayPort 1.2, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and one audio output. And the stand is ergonomic with height, tilt, and pivot adjustment capabilities, but of course is VESA mounting compliant. Overall, it's a great monitor that will cost you around $290 USD, but is on sale at the time of this video for as low as $200 USD. Again, if you have an AMD GPU, this is a great choice, but if you're a NVIDIA user that wants G-Sync, you might want to consider the MSI monitor I mentioned over this one. And that's all the monitors I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching, and before you go, consider subscribing to help the channel out. Also, feel free to comment down below other monitors or tech products I should check out and potentially make a video on in the future. Oh, and be sure to watch some of my other videos or read some of my blog posts at thecodecomet.com. But again, thanks for watching. Till next time.